So Mahindra and Mahindra have blown everyone away today on Independence Day with four stunning concepts underpinned by an all new platform. This is the next chapter of uh, Mahindra and Mahindra and talking to me about this is the man behind all the engineering and the head of the auto business of Mahindra, Mr. Velu Velusami. Velu, congratulations. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, you know, just talking on the platform. Yes. Monocoque. Yes. Uh, it's a little... Uh, you know, Mahindra's DNA has been body on frame. In fact, your most successful vehicles have been a body on frame. Body on. But monocoque is the future, isn't it? For various yeah. reasons, cafe, CO2. Uh, I mean, just your thoughts on, you know, going in the monocoque direction. So when you want to come to the uh, compact segment, you very well know if you have a frame and the rear axle, uh, the frame itself is sitting on the right on the spring and then, then you have the body and it's, it's a very difficult to match to the monocoque, the right, the right agility, the right. cornering, all these stuff, so you know it. Yeah. When we wanted to come to the compact segment, we needed a clean slate thinking and you have three uh, segments in the car and you have an engine compartment, we also say it a uh, crush space and crash space, then you have the passenger compartment, then you have a luggage compartment. You cannot do anything with the passenger compartment length and the right. engine compartment length. Right. You cannot do anything. So all that we said was, so the industry benchmark in that area is 2,600 millimeters wheel bit. Right, right, right. So we moved it to 2,665 to get the best leg room right. for the second row. Right. Uh, once you moved the, uh, the wheel base to 2,665, then the front engine compartment is getting reduced and then we needed some innovations to meet the 5-star rating. So what you're saying is, is this 5-star rating globally? Globally. Even Euro NCAP? Yes. Euro NCAP, Australian NCAP, G NCAP. Right. So we needed, we ran about 800 simulations to find it out, the uh, the structure. And the crash Typically you part. see it in the, the sill areas, you are right. strong. In the middle you are not strong. So you saw the, in the presentation how well we have optimized with the twin trident structure also side crash you need to have the ring uh, right. with the high strength steel ring that's what you see it uh, so we were able to meet the crash norms with the short uh, right so a lot of high strength steel boron in the steel boron in the steel and and also it doesn't increase the cost as much as uh, one thinks because right. you save the normal steel uh, by three is to one, and you get the weight advantage. You get the weight advantage. Weight advantage around is about forty under fifteen hundred kilos. After under fifteen hundred kilos right. for the sub four meter cost. Right. Um, so that is what is giving us, and 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 this spacious and non claustrophobic spacious inside cars, typically needs a ride handling uh, control technologies, like the um, the yeah. space requires a crash technology. Uh, so we. Yeah, we, you remember we discussed about you are not happy in right. the compact segment about the twist beam. As soon as we started thinking, I remembered your advice where you never go for twist beam. Yeah, absolutely. So we went for the yeah, file. Too outdated that. Too problem. outdated. We went for the file link that gives the best control. Uh, and then the damper technology that is needed, what is needed to control the body also acts as a conventional damper. So also gives the problems for the ride. Right. You know, we wanted the right. rush ride. But the very good control. But Velu, to be honest, with big wheels, yes. large wheels, you've gone up to quite a lot. Of, almost that in 760 mm, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Uh, unsprung mass with wheels is can also be an issue. I mean, how do you manage that? Because this is exactly way, yeah. yeah. This is exactly what we have done. Um, the damper that controls the body roll also is controlling the unsprung masses. But then the Toyota uh, damper that gives a very horizontal after the unpound, very horizontal. Uh, characteristics is making the plush right. Right. Um, it's it's uh, that. Uh, and that is and obviously just a little bit on body stiffness. I mean, obviously. That's that correct. So the, the stiffness. stiffness of the body, obviously, when you get with the highs. Would you say this is your most stiffest monocoque yet? Uh, more yes. than the XUV 700. Yes. But uh, in terms of this size, this is the best in terms of stiffness, uh, both the social stiffness and the bending stiffness and local stiffness. Right. This. And Melu, let's talk about powertrains because clearly that's yeah. it. So uh, you've got a wide range of powertrains. Yes. One would imagine for the uh, 4.3 meter, yeah. you've got that one engine still, which I saw in 2020 at uh, Auto Expo. Auto Expo. The 1.5. Yes. Uh, a good candidate for this uh, product because uh, maybe um, 2 liter might be an overkill and 1.2 liter it, might it be a little... It uh, multiple combinations. Um, I'm not rolling out. 
the 1.5 liter, uh, but it is a candidate. Right. Um, and you picked it up very well. Right. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. So uh, also, uh, so, yeah. So obviously on powertrain, and uh, you know, I think it's the uh, EV. Uh, let's say flexibility. EV, ice, diesel, gasoline. Yeah. Right. But you know, we saw in your presentation you talked about four by four. Yes. Logically, all wheel drive. All wheel drive. Yeah. yeah. So all wheel drive makes sense with an EV powertrain much easier to do yes. because putting in a propeller shaft and yeah, the whole yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. transaxle, uh, yeah. I, I would imagine yeah. it, that's too complicated and an EV for all wheel drive is the best solution. Um, in this compact segment, all wheel drive is not that demanded as you know, your exactly. statistics are very low. Yeah. Um, still, there are some enthusiasts, so we need to cater for them. So we have solutions in both forms, ICE form as well as the EV form, the all-wheel drive is available. Uh, as per the market demand, we will offer it, but our primary is the front wheel. Right. And we do, of course, the diesel, your mainstay. Uh, uh, I just want to ask, can a 2-litre be packaged in this uh, vehicle or is it uh, is a bit of an overkill? Then? Um, you can. Uh, so the packaging is done for the all the powertrains that is available with us right now. Um, Maybe overseas, overseas markets uh, may take the... Right. But right. you know... Uh, yeah, um, in India, I mean, we've seen the Thar 1.5 yeah. is doing quite well. And quite 1.5 diesel is a pretty good engine as well. Yeah, of course. Right, right, yeah. right. But maybe it could be a life cycle measure going life forward and stuff. Right. Because when you create a platform, you do want to uh, take care of all the engines being packaged right. and then meeting the... Yeah. And Vilu, uh, you know, I want to talk on the ENE e architecture. You all went to Ethernet with yes. your BEVs. Yes. Uh, is it going to be similar? Is it going to be an upgrade? Uh, so it is a OTA-based Ethernet architecture. Right. Uh, maybe uh, the sub-4 meter cars will have a limited one. Right. And the over 4 meter cars will have a full-flown. Uh, but it is a modular architecture. So we right. build it modular architecture. So yeah. Right. So the hardware is separated from the software. Right. Look. And Velu, just a little bit on again, uh, you know, looking at the vehicles, uh, they are super tall. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, just a couple of things is with this height. Yes. Uh, clearly with the massive ground carriages, yes. uh, CG could be high. What you're saying is you are confident of combating with your new suspension. Innovation. Yeah. So the one of the revelations that we learned even in the Thor Rocks is uh, it's not how tall you are, it is how much tall your the roll axis is. Right. So we have played around with the roll axis heavily that we will reveal during the launch, but the key lies there. Right, 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 right. No, Velu, thanks very much. Uh, great insights. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, just the fact that you have had uh, so many powertrains, I just want to understand, I mean, uh, you know, making such a pl flexible platform uh, where are the trade-offs really? Because, you know, if you do pure EV, uh, it's one thing and ICE is one thing. I mean, where do you kind of balance, uh, you know, the EV and so ICE? So the learning that I have, I'm not the global expert on architectures, but the learning I have is in a 2000 car, like 4.67 meter vehicles, the rear wheel drive is the best. You can see all the cars. Right. So the moment you put a rear wheel drive motor, you need to have certain overhang so that you can put all the peripheries. Correct. And even as a cost benefit, isn't it? Cost benefit, yeah. Right. And on a, uh, on a vehicle of, uh, when the motor has in one RPM, you have the full torque, you can push it the 2000 kgs, plus right. the, all the load. Right. So the limit, limit, how much you can do to the steered wheel. The steered wheel. So you need the... Uh, you need... The, so basically, the more powerful the cars, it, the the case for rear wheel drive becomes stronger. Yeah, yeah, power that. But in the uh, so therefore the in that XUV, for example, if you take the XUV 7W, it's a front wheel driven. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a, a you need a separate ICE platform and separate EV platform there. Right. But whereas here in four uh, in a four meter car, the overhangs are limited, so you are not able to put the motor there. Also, in a thousand five hundred kilo vehicle weight, in our simulations we found. We can live with the front motor. Right. Still, yet it can be born electric in terms of driving agility, in terms of handling, all of that. It, it, it comes really well. Right. So, there is a natural ally at 1500 kgs for an born electric and born uh, ice to be with the same architecture of front wheel driven. Right. So, therefore, here we took this route. Right. Designing the born electric. What is more important is the plat flow. Got it. If you get a flat floor and if you get a perfect suspension system in the rear, you get a five, five link, you can put all-wheel drive there. Right. Multi-link suspension system allows you all-wheel drive there. Right. Then you really get the Bond Electric and it's like a 
superimposition of the bond electric right. and bond ice. That right. was the. And again, I would imagine you'd go for the blade cells in this as well, uh, 580 yes. mm. So, so that's, that's what in manufacturing. So we will uh, we have a global contact with global partners. Yeah. Uh, cell supply. So we we. We right. Use them. Yeah. right. So uh, obviously, even if it's a blade cell, the width of the cell would determine some dimension of the car as well. That we have taken care in the platform. That's right. why the two six six five. Right. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's so also wise track. So matching well. to electric induced thinking. Right. But in the eyes, it gives you the cabin space. Yeah. 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 Not that. Not so. It's yes. Uh, great value. Thanks so much, yeah. uh, talking cars. Uh, uh, fascinating, and can't wait to now wait for these cars to hit the road. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks.